I'm going to read through Half Past Two by UA Fanthorpe. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Literature exam, paper one. Half Past Two. Once upon a school time, he did something very wrong. I forget what it was. So straight away, um, we have this sense of a fairy tale with once upon a, but rather than the line finishing as we would expect it once upon a time, it's juxtaposed with school time. So we have once upon a evoking like a fairy tale, a sense of fantasy, um, all kind of linked with this theme of childhood. But that's juxtaposed with the harshness of school, you could argue, especially in this boy's experience, which we will learn later. Schools seem to be quite harsh um, and uncaring. So it's the complete opposite to, to what we might expect. Um, he, the fact that we have capitalization on something very wrong, um, I think highlights again the lack of understanding of the boy. Um, but it could also show the authority of the teacher. These are the words of the teacher. You have done something very wrong. Um, you'll notice all the way through the poem, I've circled any time um, words are incorrectly capitalised. Um, I won't be put, explaining or writing the explanation next to that for each slide. So just remember, if it has that capitalization, it's the same idea, this, this either lack of understanding or this authority given to the teacher. We also have school time, which should, should be two words, but in this poem, poem is incorrectly um, a compound word. Again, this highlights his lack of understanding, specifically these compound words all the way through, which are highlighted in pink all the way through the poem. Um, they highlight his lack of understanding um, of the concept of time. He seems to have quite a simple understanding of time. And that, again, reflects the innocence of this boy and just how young he is. Supporting that further is the simple language and simple sentence structure that is used throughout the poem. Um, so I think this helps mirror the way the boy would think or speak. And it helps the reader um imagine how difficult it would be for him to understand this situation. And she said he'd done something very wrong and must stay in the schoolroom till half past two. So again, we have this capitalization. Um, the capitalization of she suggests that, and I, I'm sure we, re, we all recall being, um, you know, four or five years of age and really kind of maybe fearing our teacher or looking up to them in um, in a different way to the way we do now. Um, so you could even argue that it paints the teacher almost in a godlike image. Um, that's kind of the amount of authority that teacher has for a young child. Uh, and with that comes great responsibility. And you could argue um, that this poem criticises the education system, or at least criticises this particular teacher for being irresponsible. This boy clearly doesn't understand what he's done. The vagueness of something, oops, something very wrong tells us that he doesn't understand what he's done wrong. Um, so the punishment is going to be ineffective because he doesn't really understand why he's being punished. And to further support this idea that this is a criticism of the teacher, we have being cross, she'd forgotten, she hadn't taught him time. He was too scared at being wicked to remind her. Um, so she's so angry, she's so worked up with him that um, she's completely dis disregarded the fact that she hasn't taught him time. She hasn't done her job. That's her job. And um, she hasn't done it. And instead, she's given him a punishment that he doesn't understand. Um, you could, it could be implied here that she um, almost rules with fear as well. The fact that he's too scared to tell her that he doesn't understand the term half past two um, tells us that she, again, is an ineffective teacher to the point that her student is too afraid to tell her. Um, that he doesn't understand. So this evokes sympathy for the um, for the child. He knew a lot of time. He knew getting up time, time you were off time, 
time to go home now time, TV time. Um, so what you'll notice is the times that he understands are um, times that relate to a certain routine. He knows that it's time to get up because he's, I'm sure his mum or dad tell him. Um, time you're off time, that's I'm sure time to leave for school. And then time to go home now time, maybe his teacher tells him it's time to go. And then when he gets home, it's TV time. And I think there's a real sense of security relayed with the times that he is comfortable with. And it suggests that he's got this um, routine set out typically by his parents, but also by, by his school. Um, but I think there's a great sense of security. So introducing this concept of half past two, you could argue is intimidating to this boy who is only used to these kind of terms. We move on as well to a different time, time for my kiss time, that was grand time. All the important times he knew, but not half past two. Um, so time for my kiss time, I think, just helps indicate how loving his family are. He's obviously from comes from a happy home. Um, and this punishment just creates this sense of unease for a boy who has clearly this um, set routine in his life. And um, he's been asked to kind of leave that security and enter this into this term of half past two, which he, he doesn't understand. Oh, I could have written here as well, the security of this routine contrasts with the insecurity created by half past two. So you could also comment on contrast here. He knew the clock face, the little eyes and two long legs for walking, but he couldn't click its language. So he says he knows the clock, basically, but he doesn't really, does he? This just um, exposes how little he understands about time. The personification here, I think, helps emphasise the innocence. The only thing he can take from looking at a clock is that it looks like a person uh, with the two long legs for walking and the little eyes. Um, and we've got the uh, quite clever bit of onomatopoeia here. Obviously, couldn't click re uh, can mean you couldn't understand something. It didn't click, meaning um, I didn't understand it. Um, but obviously, click also reflects the sound that a clock makes. So we've got that reminder of kind of the ticking of time going by. So he waited beyond once upon her, out of reach of all the time fours, and knew he'd escaped forever. Um, so we've got the um, compound words again, and he's almost um, uh, going beyond it and out of reach of these times, gives this sense of escape. Um, and he says he's, he's, he's escaped. So with this comes a triumphant tone. He's escaped the, conf oh, I don't know why I've got, um, I think that was a typo. Shouldn't be a, an apostrophe there at all. Um, triumphant tone, he's escaped the confinement of the teacher's punishment. And there should be an apostrophe there. Dear me, I don't know what's going on with me today. Apologies, please don't write that in your own books. Um, but you could say, who's speaking right now because it's it doesn't sound like it's a personal story because we've got the pronoun he but it's definitely i'd say narrated by an adult um so is this from an adult's perspective and are they looking at the the child almost um with envy because they managed to escape time for a bit they entered this timeless world um so, and, and for an adult, that would be solace. That would provide freedom from the deadlines that you typically have as an adult, the bills that you have to pay, um, the times that you have to turn up for work and so on. Um, so you might argue that this creates a nostalgic tone, okay, because it's an adult thinking back to the freedom you had as a child when you were not aware of time and there was a sense of freedom. And as he escapes, he goes into the smell of old chrysanthemums on her desk, into the silent noise his hangnail made, 
into the air outside the window, into ever. So we have anaphora here, into the, into the, into the, um, which reflects him entering this timeless void. He's, he's escaped time altogether and he's, he's, kind of, he's living in the moment and he's kind of just living in his own mind, just taking in things that are around him. He's smelling the flowers in the room. He's even um, paying close attention to the hangnail. Have a look what a hangnail is. I had to search for this as well. I wasn't sure what it was. Um, it's difficult to explain. I've got them on my own nails right now. But um, just Google search and you'll see an image of a hangnail. But you can imagine he's kind of lost in the moment and he's just staring at these hangnails on, on his fingers. Um, into the air outside the window. So that, that's a great image of freedom. Windows typically are symbols of freedom. Um, so again, is this an adult looking back going, God, I was so free then. Or can you remember when I didn't really think about time and just how free I was. I didn't have that pressure. And then, my goodness, she said, scuttling in, I forgot all about you. Run along or you'll be late. So obviously the teacher comes back. Um, I, again, think that the poem is being critical of the of the teacher by referring to her movements as scuttling in. Almost sounds like a beetle. Um, so there's an element here, again, I think there's a bit in, bitterness towards this teacher and the fact that they have been so irresponsible and forgotten about this poor child. Um, and there's a really dismissive tone as well that's just going, go on, run along, go on or you'll be late. There's not even an apology. Um, and it's the teacher who brings this child back into conventional time by reminding them, you'll be late, you'll be late home. Um, so unfortunately, they, they've kind of come back to reality and now they're again confined by time in the real world. So she slotted him back into school time and he got home in time for tea time next time, not time for that now time. Um, so we've got sibilance here. You could argue that um, that relates to the bitterness towards the teacher. Tip, not always, but sibilance can create that kind of sinister um, effect. And I would argue that's what the case in this line. Um, also, the word slotted suggests that she almost sees him like an objects in my mind and there's an image almost of like how you might slot a file into place um it's almost like he's she's picking him up and just putting him back in place and again i think that supports this kind of dismissive tone of her just kind of slotting him back and um not really um caring for him or she's definitely not apologetic about what she's done and again, he's back to the times that he understands. Tea time, next time, not time for that now time. So he's back home. But he never forgot how once, by not knowing time, he escaped into the clockless land forever, where time hides tickless, waiting to be born. Um, so the fact that he never forgot this moment suggests actually it was a really important moment to him. And again, is it as an adult looking back? with great envy at a time when time, it's really difficult not to mention time a million times as I as I talk through this poem, but um, is it an adult envying their past as a child and how little they worried about time? Um, or is it an adult looking back and never forgetting because they're really bitter about how little their teacher cared for them? and how they feel um, their teacher was irresponsible and dismissive of them. We have repetition of escape to gain. So this idea, I think, of this kind of nostalgia of like, oh, remember a time when I didn't care about deadlines and bills and so on. Um, and co clockless land and tickless are all kind of a metaphor, I think, for the freedom of childhood. Um, so looking at structure and um, and form, we've got 11 tercets. Now, that so that seems quite structured. Some of these do not look like tercets. So that's that tercet is three lines, and that's just because I couldn't squeeze it on here. So the, this, for instance, is supposed to be one line. Um, so you've got uh, you've got some regularity with the number of lines, at least. 
Um, so you could argue that kind of regularity is time. That time is inevitably ticking by, whether we understand it or not. But that contrasts with everything else. It contrasts with the irregular line length, the enjarment. Sometimes enjarment moves on to, um, so look here, the enjarment moves on to the next stanza even. And it's free verse. So I think that, so the regularity of the three lines contrasts with the irreg irregularity of everything else. And I would argue that highlights, even though we've got this kind of um, conventional time, convention of time that ticks by regardless, that's in stark contrast to a child's mind, um, their inability to measure, um, their inability to um, be confined to to time like the teacher tried to confine the, the child to time and it didn't really work so they escaped it in their own mind um, but you could also argue that it's because it's a memory memories are non-numeric and that's why it's um it lacks that structure um themes clearly the, uh, this is a theme of childhood also memory punishment time um but also the criticism of um of the education system as well you could think about that more broadly and say it's criticism of, of adults and um, how dismissive they can be of children.